the Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Bojangles of Harlem from the picture Swing Time. <laughs> timely news for these exciting football days. The weekly American high school magazine called Scholastic recently asked the 274 high school coaches to list the foods they recommend for football squads and training. Here are the results. Milk headed the beverage list. Apples were first among fruit. And Jell-O topped all other desserts. That vote of confidence means a lot to Jell-O for those 274 coaches represent some 245,000 high school athletes. Jell-O is good for them, but that isn't all. Jell-O also tastes good to them, extra good. And not only to athletes, but to everyone else, old and young as well. For Jell-O is as luscious as refreshed. Of all gelatin desserts, Jell-O and only Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. So if you want the best, don't accept any substitutes. Get the real thing. Insist on genuine Jell-O. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the star of two Paramount Pictures, Jack Benny. <laughs> Love sends a little gift of roses. <laughs> oh, Don, you got my introduction wrong. It's not the star of two Paramount Pictures. It's the star of many Paramount Pictures. Oh, sorry, Jack, my error. Uh, so now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the star of too many Paramount Pictures, Jack Benny. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> oh, say, Don, come here a minute. You know, I heard, now, this may be a surprise to you, but I heard quite a bit of unfavorable criticism about last Sunday's program. You know, some people seem to think that when I mentioned my performance in my new picture, The Big Broadcast, I was just a little bit too egotistical. Oh, uh, did they notice it, too? <laughs> well, I was only trying to be fair, that's all. You know, if I was bad, I'd be the first one to admit it. I imagine. <laughs> and you know, Don, just to check on it, I went to the Paramount Theater every night this past week to see the picture. Oh, that must have been fun. Yeah. And let me tell you something. The picture is doing such good business, they're holding it over. Oh, that's great. Now you'll have some place to go next week. <laughs> yeah. well, Jack, wasn't it, uh, wasn't it pretty tiresome seeing the same show day in and day out? Well, yes, Don. I must admit that after the third day, that newsreel got pretty monotonous. <laughs> I began to anticipate what was coming. You know, uh, Spain is in pretty bad shape right now. So are you. Uh, pardon me, sir, but these microphones are for the use of the cast only. I'm sorry. <laughs> See the way people walk around here. Where, uh, where were we, Don? Oh, at the Paramount. Oh, yes. Is the feature on yet? I mean, uh, <laughs> I guess we've said enough about the picture. Uh, Jack, I meant to ask you, did you hear any comment on the Anthony Adverse play that you did last Sunday? Well, yes, and incidentally, Sam Harris, the uh, New York producer, heard the program and offered me $3,000 a week to play Anthony Adverse on the stage. 3000 a week? Yes, and, uh, Don, be careful. You know how fast these things get around. You know, I understand, Jack. I won't breathe it to a soul. Oh, you don't have to go that far, Don. You can tell a few friends. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hello, Jack. What are you bragging about this week? Oh, nothing. I was just telling Don about Sam Harris, the New York producer. He offered me uh, $4,000 a week to play Anthony Adverse on the stage. You know, Frederick March's part. Well, are you surprised, Mary? No, I was calling my dog. <laughs> you know, Jack, I'm surprised Sam Harris didn't get Frederick March for the part. Now, Don, I'm sure Mr. Harris knows what he's doing. Besides, I think there's something March-like about me. Don't you, Mary? You're full of wind, if that's what you mean. <laughs> I didn't mean the month of March, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know what to do about the offer. Do you think you'll take it, Jack? 
Oh, I don't know. Say, $5,000 a week is quite a... Attractive, you know. Gee, I can hardly believe it. Neither do I. Mm. Well, it's the truth. And by the way, Mary, remember, uh, uh, keep it strictly confidential, no? Don't worry, Jack. I'll tell everybody. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Showing off because Loretta Young is sitting in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you, Don, uh, uh, Sam Harris... Uh... <laughs> Let's give Loretta a nice hand for all her work in the picture. <laughs> Well, uh, Don, uh, Sam Harris wired me to select my own leading lady uh, out here in Hollywood. Nice gesture on his part. Huh? Yeah, it surely was. Yeah, I don't know who to pick out. I have so many favorites. Uh, Mary, who's your favorite movie star? Uh, Cary Grant. Fine, I'll look, I'll look nice playing opposite Cary Grant. <laughs> I mean your favorite leading lady. Oh, uh, I don't know. I like Universal. Universal? A movie star? Yeah, she works at Metro. At Una Merkel. Oh. <laughs> Universal. Say, she wouldn't be bad, you know. Love sends a little gift of Kenny. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Tell him, Don. Kenny, did you hear about the swell proposition Jack had? No, what was it? Oh, nothing, Kenny. Sam Harris just offered me $7,000 a week to play Anthony Adverse. 7000 What happened to six? <laughs> you know, Kenny, what really bothers me is i got to find a leading lady out here, and I don't know who to get. Uh, who's your favorite movie star? Tallulah Bank Night. <laughs> Tallulah Bank Night. Kenny, you mean Bankhead. It's not Bank Night. Oh, I don't care. I never win anyway. <laughs> well, what do you go for? Blonde. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> Why, Kenny, I'm surprised at you. That's all right. He never wins anyway. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, I told you about my offer from Harris in strict confidence, so uh, you know what I mean. Keep it under your hat, huh? Gee, I never wear one. No, oh, you never wear one. Did you ever hear of anybody wearing two? I did. Who? Amos and Andy. <laughs> well, that was my fault. Hmm, Amos and Andy. Who's he? <laughs> Who's he? That's Amos and Andy. They're on the radio. Oh, I thought I was. You know, Jack, that Kenny gets dopier every day. Oh, he does not. He does, too. He does not. Don't listen to him, Mary. <laughs> Why, Kenny, what's the matter with you? I was sticking up for you. You were not. I was, too. Don't listen to him, Kenny. Oh, heaven's sake. Play, Phil. I will not. You will, too. All right. Who's the craziest mob I ever saw? You will not. You will, too. You will not. You will, too. <laughs>
was I Will Not, played by, I mean, uh, South Sea Island Magic, played by Phil Harris and his Haristocrats of Melody. <laughs> I kind of like that. I certainly think of some cute names for your orchestra, don't I, Phil? Yeah, yeah. but you're cute anyway. <laughs> I think so. You should see me when I'm shaved. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, I hear you have an opportunity to appear on the legitimate stage. Is that right? Oh, yes, yes. Well, are you going to do it? Well, I'd like to. Uh, Sam Harris is a swell guy to work for, and a change is good for anybody. Of course, Phil, you'll keep this under your hat, won't you? Well, I'm sorry, but I just loaned it to Kenny. No. I never saw a program with so few hats. (laughs) Mary, what are you laughing at? Knock, knock. Oh, all right. Who's there? Few hats. Few hats who? Few hats who? You had some better jokes, I wouldn't have to knock knock. <laughs> now, isn't that silly? Well, Jack, I want to wish you a lot of success in your new venture. Sort of looks like you're going from one Harris to another. Oh, yes. Uh, say, and Phil, you don't happen to be related to him, do you, Phil? No, Jack. You see, he spells his name H-A-R-R-I-S. I see. Uh, how do you spell yours? Y-O-U-R-S. Oh. Uh, well. <laughs> well, there is a difference there. I mean, Pardon me, Mr. Harris. I just finished the raising of your last number. Do you mind if I leave now? No, go right ahead. Oh, just a minute. Say, Jack, you haven't met my new arranger, have you? No, no. Well, I want you to shake hands with Mr. Blue. He's a great admirer of yours. Well, well, I'm very glad to know you, Mr. Blue. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> well, have you uh, have you been with Phil a long time? Well, I used to have my own orchestra in San Diego, but I've been with this band now about four or five weeks. <laughs> oh, so you, uh... You had your own orchestra, eh? Well, what made you give it up? Well, we were playing in a great big ballroom, an awful big place, but, but nobody ever showed up in those things. Kind of depressed me. <laughs> well, that's, that's too bad. And, and now you're an arranger. Are you from California? No, I'm a, I'm a Texas arranger. <laughs> Very good, very good. Well, Mr. Blue, you know, I'm quite a musician myself. I'm a violinist. Oh, a fiddler, eh? Well, yes. In fact, the uh, violin was really my first love. You don't say. Oh, yes, yes. Boy, were you jilted. (laughs) Why? Well, I'm very glad to have met you, Mr. Blue. It's been a great pleasure, and I hope you'll be on this program for a long time. Thanks. I hope you will, too. (laughs) Awfully nice fellow. What do you think of him, Mary? Things like that depress me. Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey, Kenny. Where's Kenny? Here I am, Jack. Oh, it's time for your song. Uh, what's it going to be tonight? Well, Jack, I want to do something real good, so I'm going to sing Make Believe for Show Bob. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Say, Dom, we're about halfway through our program. Haven't you been strangely silent? What do you mean, Jack? You know. Oh, yes, Jack. <clears throat> Jell-O is first in flavor because it's first in flavor. So be sure to insist on genuine Jell-O, which comes in six delicious flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry. Oh, it's never live. <laughs> you know, we should have been vaccinated before Mr. Blue came in. <laughs> sing, Kenny, sing. <laughs> Supposing is the sweetest game I know. Our dreams are more romantic than the world we see. And if the things we dream about don't happen to be so, that's just an unimportant technicality. Could make believe I love you. Only make believe that you love me. Others find peace of mind in 
in pretending. Couldn't you, couldn't I, couldn't we make believe our lips are blending a phantom kiss or two or three? Might as well make believe I love you. Jerome Kern's Make Believe, sung by Kenny Baker with Phil Harris at the baton. And it really was thrilling. Jack, that's swell. Thanks a lot. Phil, I meant that for Kenny. Oh. Thanks, Jack. Well, it was really swell, Kenny. It was great. It was so clear, and I don't know, your voice seemed to be so high tonight. Ah, uh, you just noticed it because my salary's so low. <laughs> well, Kenny, next week, sing the Sleep in the Deep, and you won't notice it. <laughs> I'm going to wait for that laugh. I think it's awfully good. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, before going any further with tonight's program, I feel that I must take advantage of this opportunity and announce our feature attraction for next week. I'm sure that all of you have heard of Shakespeare, and most of you are familiar with his works, especially Romeo and Juliet. Well, that's what we're going to present for your entertainment next Sunday night, our version of Romeo and Juliet. See a double feature. Yes. Thanks, night too, and this. I wanted to uh, keep this a surprise, but we've put so much time and thought into it that I simply cannot restrain myself any longer. Are you glad? Hooray! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't forget, Romeo and Juliet, the greatest romance of all time. A story as tender as a rosebud. As thrilling as love's young dream. As touching as a letter from home. As tempting as a dish of jello. As strong as the rock of Gibraltar. And slow as molasses. Quiet. <laughs> we'll speed it up. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will present tonight a preview of some of the highlights from this immortal classic, which we are going to offer next week. Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Romance. Ah, Juliet, my love. Wherefore art thou, Juliet? Up here on yon balcony. Come, climb up to me, Romeo. Wait, my sweet, whilst I build this ladder. Suspense. Ah, Juliet, my betrothed. The ladder is nearly finished. Tell me, is thine father home? Yes. Gazoo. <laughs> Grandma. Well, children, it sure is nice to see you all this evening, and I... It's a drama, not grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nurse. Tragedy. Ah, me thinks my task is complete. I shall ascend yon ladder to my love. Ah, uh, can this be the balcony? No, this is a mezzanine. The balcony is three flights up. <laughs> Then I shall climb further. <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, art thou hurt? Art thou hurt, Romeo? Was Romeo hurt? Will he recover? Can the ladder be picked? Don't tell him, Don. <laughs> Make him listen. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> be sure and listen in next Sunday night when we offer our complete version of Romeo and Juliet. Ah, to be or not to be, that is the question. Answer the phone, Mary. Hello? Who? It's for you, Jack. New York calling. It's Mr. Lawton Campbell of General Foods. Oh, the boss? Mm -hmm. uh, well. Hello? Hello, Mr. Campbell. Yes, yes. Did you hear what we're going to do next Sunday night? 
What's that? Oh. Well, I thought it was a swell idea. But, Mr. Campbell, we've spent a lot of time preparing it, and, gee, we've already built the ladder. No, no, it isn't the money. It's the principle of the thing. Now, what? Now, now, wait a minute, Mr. Campbell. I know you're the sponsor, and your word is law. But I've always tried to please you, and I think this is going just a little too far. Careful what you say, Jack. Please, Don. <laughs> now, listen, Mr. Campbell. I don't want to argue about this thing, but I've been in show business a good many years, and I think I know the pulse of the public. Well, I said, let's answer, Jack. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something. I've already announced Romeo and Juliet, and we're going to do it. Gee, I'm scared. Okay, Mr. Campbell, okay. I don't care if this is my last program. Yeah, I realize what this means. But whether you like it or not, Romeo and Juliet are going on next Sunday night. Goodbye. Hmm. How do you like that? <laughs> what do you... Gee, that, that burns me up. These don't, this heat, this jungle. That was last week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thing has got me all upset. Jack, weren't you just a little bit too hasty? Well, who wouldn't be? You're working slave and try to do something high class, and what does it get you? Hmm. Oh, are you all standing around there like a bunch of dummies? Oh, take it easy, Jack. Oh, take it easy, huh? You guess we're trying to do something new and different. Now, if I were you, Jack... You stay out of it. <laughs> it ain't Charles Lawson talking, either. <laughs> now, listen, fellas. We're going through with this. We'll find out who's running this program. Boss or no boss. Romeo and Juliet goes on next Sunday night. And a boy, Jack. Yes, sir. Yes, sir <laughs> me that... Say, uh, say, Don. Yes, Jack? Uh, do you think there are enough people familiar with the story of this? Why, certainly, Jack. Every school child knows it. Well, I mean, do you think there are enough school children? I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't want to do something What's that... the matter now? You're trying to get out of it? Who, me? No, but you have to be careful about Romeo and Juliet. It's a little risque, you know. <laughs> I have to watch out for the kitties. I'll show you a job. Yeah. Oh, it isn't that. <laughs> I just don't believe in dashing into things blindly. And then, I don't know, Romeo and Juliet isn't topical. Why, it is too, Jack. The picture's out and everybody is talking about it. That's what I mean. It's too topical. And... <laughs> now, listen, fellas, maybe we ought to postpone Romeo and Juliet. You know, we can always do it. And, uh, gee, I... Give me the phone, Mary. Here it is. Oops. <laughs> You're a little shaky there, Jack. No, no, I'm all right. <laughs> Operator, oper give me long distance, please. Yeah. Say, so, you know what I think, Don, if we... Uh, long distance? I want to get New York City, Ashland, 8400. Yes, and hurry, please. Say, so, kids, you can all go home if you want to. I mean, there's no use hanging around here. There's nothing else okay, to do. Good night, I'll see you later. Good night. Good night, uh, good night fellas. So long. Hurry that up, Operator. Dum, 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 dee, dum, dum. Da -dum, da -dee, dum. Well, hello? Oh, I thought I heard someone. <laughs> hello? I want to speak to Mr. Campbell, please. Dum, 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 dee. Da -dum, da -dum, dee, dee. Uh, Mr. Campbell? Uh, this is Jack Benny again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh... <laughs> Say, when we were talking before, uh, yeah, you know, when I was kidding about next week's program, I, well, this is awfully funny. I'll bet, uh, Mr. Campbell, I bet you really thought we were going to do Romeo and Juliet. You did? <laughs> That's one on you. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> yes, yes, I sure will. Yes, sir. Well, look, Mr. Campbell, uh, what would you suggest we do next Sunday night? Oh, a fellow as clever as you must have some idea. Hmm? What's that? A minstrel show? Oh, you mean a real old-fashioned minstrel show? Oh, sure. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's a swell idea. What's that? Oh, no, Mr. Campbell, no, you can't be the interlocutor. That's my job. <laughs> so I'll have to put my foot down there. <laughs> Mildly, of course. <laughs> well, uh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Campbell. Thanks for calling. Oh, yes, I called you. Yeah, well, thanks anyway. Uh, uh, oh, uh, say, Mr. Campbell, <laughs> I sure was a bad boy, wasn't I? <laughs> well... Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, <laughs> yum, bum, bum, yum, bum. Ba -bum, ba -bum, oh, oh, Jack. Why, Mary, I thought you went home. Well, I decided to wait for you, Jack. I was a little worried. Oh, everything is okay. In fact, I have a surprise for you, Mary. I just thought of a terrific idea. You know what I think we ought to do next Sunday night? What? A minstrel show. A real old-fashioned minstrel show. Gee, that's swell. Do you think Mr. Campbell let you do it? Oh, I think so. He's a regular guy. They say, if he tried to stop me from doing that, I'd really blow up. <laughs> Jack, what made you think of a minstrel show? Oh, I don't know. It just flashed through my mind. I guess you'd call it inspiration. You know what inspiration means, Mary, huh? Yeah, an order from the boss. <laughs> you little eavesdropper. Say, Mary, if you wait a few minutes, I'll take you home. Okay. I won't be long. Okay. Play, boys. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> number of the fourth program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be black next week with our minstrel show. Get it? <laughs> Mr. Benny. Oh, Mr. Blue, are you still here? Say, I heard you talking about that minstrel show next week, and I'd like to be in it. Why, what did you do? Well, I thought that maybe I could sort of play the villain. <laughs> a villain in a minstrel show. Good night, folks. <laughs> by Jerome Kern is from Swing Time. This program originated in the NBC studios in Hollywood. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles.